Because the film is so thin, it has the ability to pick up the texture of whatever is underneath it. So I strongly suggest you find a really smooth surface to attach your film to uh, with tape. Uh, I prefer the Strathmore Bristol plate. It's very, very smooth. It doesn't transfer any sort of texture from the paper onto the film when I'm drawing. So go ahead and get a sheet of film to practice on and tape it to your smooth surface of choice. I'm going to explain some of the tools that I have here. I'm trying to keep it fairly simple. There's more tools that I will introduce as we go through the projects, but these are basically where I'd like you to start. So we have a variety of brushes. Let's start with those first. And you might be thinking, why do we need brushes for drawing? Well, we're, I'm going to show you very soon that it's actually very difficult to make any sort of gradients on the drafting film. So this is where the brushes come in handy and our loose graphite. So this is just the cap of a little jar that I have. And what I do is I tap a little bit of the graphite into the cap. This is just to keep things neat and tidy. I used to use the whole jar out and about and I've knocked it over countless times and it makes quite a mess. So I strongly suggest you put it into something smaller and keep it close by. You can't fully create gradients, but what you can do is lay down a little bit of um, tonal values. And so you can see the brush just picked up a little bit of the graphite and transferred it onto the drafting film. So this is actually just uh, a makeup brush. It's for applying eye makeup. And this one is a lip brush and you can see it's a little stiffer. And then here I have a watercolor brush and in terms of stiffness, it's just somewhere in between the two of them. So the light one is going to give you very light, airy, soft values on your surface. Uh, and then this one, it can make it a little darker and help you um, move around the graphite just a little bit more. And then the stiff one, if I put a little bit of the graphite onto the stiffer one, you can see I'm able to get it a lot darker. I have the, the Tombow Mono Zero Eraser. It's a fine tipped eraser and you're going to find this very helpful for making a variety of different kinds of lines. And then the next eraser that you're going to use is a kneaded eraser. I'll shape it into a wedge like so with my fingers and this edge right here becomes my tool. So let me show you what I mean here. What I want to point out here is because the softer brush just laid on a very light layer of the graphite onto the film, the eraser was able to pick it up fairly easily. And what you notice here is the mark that I made with the stiffer brush, the stiffer brush really ground the graphite into the surface of the film, making it a lot harder for my kneaded eraser to pick it up. So those are things to keep in mind. The next thing you could do if you really needed to get that up is use this because you can use a little bit more force to get that graphite up. The only thing that you want to be careful about with your um, Mono Zero eraser is that eraser tip is going to pick up a lot of the graphite as you go and then eventually it's going to turn itself into a tool because it will be fully saturated and it, it itself will start making lines instead of erasing. So just something to keep in mind. And then we have a mechanical pencil. I like this Graph Gear 500. It has 0.5 lead in it and I've, I've filled it with B lead, something right down the middle. One of the things that you're gonna notice with drafting film is that you can't quite make uh, gradients the same way you would with paper. I'm making a traditional gradient where I start off with a lot of pressure and then I slowly ease up on the pressure to get lighter and lighter. Now, if this were paper, the next thing I would do is either pick up my blending stump or a chamois or even use my finger to blend that out to make it a lot more smoother. That doesn't work in this instance with this drafting film. One of the things that you could do is pick up your brush, 
and go over those areas. And what the brush does is it just picks up the graphite that's right there on the surface that your pencil left behind and moves it around slightly blending it from one area to the next. This is a very helpful way of blending, but however, you can see that it's not blending perfectly and you can still see a lot of my pencil marks. You may like that, you may not. To get around that, I've created a lot of different methods and techniques that give me the same effect without having to make gradients like this. This is also why I think the drafting film lends very well to animal artwork uh, and pet portraits. And as we go along in some of the projects that are coming up, you'll see how I get around making a traditional gradient like this. The other tool that I really like to use is a blending stump. Now this one has the paper inside of it firmly wrapped. So I was actually able to shave it down with a, an X-Acto blade to give myself a hard point. Um, not all of them can do this and I've had a really hard time finding other blending stumps that are like this one. A lot of them have the paper that it's made out of is a lot looser and so you're not able to get a nice fine point on it. So if you can find one like this, I strongly suggest this tool. What I like to do is I actually put that little tip into the loose graphite as well and turn it into a drawing tool. And what I like about this is it makes a softer mark than the pencil does. The pencil um, can be a little harsh sometimes. Now see, the reason why I like doing the graphite on the drafting film is because that pencil gets so inky black. I think it's beautiful once you've got a full drawing um, with a lot of lights and darks, that inky blackness is just a beautiful part of the drawing. It's hard to have sometimes a really light touch with your pencil. It requires a lot of finesse getting those pencil lines to be really, really soft. So I've gotten around that with using the blending stump. So what I'd love for you to do while you're practicing is practice putting the graphite in various ways onto the surface and then using your erasers and take it back up again. The reason why I want you to practice putting it on and taking it off again is because I want you to see that you can't erase in the same way that you could with paper. So if I had made a mistake on a piece of paper, I would have just gone at it really hard with uh, your, you know, your typical white eraser. You can't really do that with this material. What happens is the eraser and the pressure will disrupt the tooth that's on the surface. The drafting film has just about enough tooth to hold onto the pencil where the pencil will actually stick on there pretty well. It's not like graphite, whereas if I blew on it, it would all fly away. So you don't have to worry about that. However, once it's on there, it's kind of on there. It's best to have a little bit of a plan when you're going for um, a drawing where you, want your val where you want your values to be, your highlights, your darks. And so now that I made that gradient, what I'm gonna do is just erase right through it so you can see what happens. So as you can see where it got lighter came up fairly well and I could probably get it pretty close to the paper color or the film color. And up here where I used a lot of pressure, it's a little bit more difficult to pick it up. Um, and again, I don't want to go at the, at the surface too hard because I'm going to disrupt that tooth. And a good way to show you how that, what that looks like is if later I wanted to add um, more of the graphite back on, the graphite kind of sticks oddly to where you had just erased. And then what ends up happening is you're just fighting against yourself. Have a little bit of a plan when, you're, when you start a drawing. Don't go too dark too soon. Um, I always try to leave my, dark, my darkest darks for when I'm fully confident on that's where they live and that I don't need to adjust it or move it or make any major changes. Another thing that I want to just point out too is that you should be really careful about how you handle the, the film. You should always handle it from the edges and try not to touch it with your fingers where you intend to draw. Now I'm just going to give you an example of what happens here. I'm just going to place my finger here and load up the brush with a little bit of the, the powder. And you'll see very quickly that you end up with like a crime scene situation here where the graphite powder sticks to your fingerprint. 
Now, if you were in the middle of a drawing and you were halfway through and you ran into a fingerprint and this is what was happening, you'd be really upset with yourself. So just be very, very careful. I have actually run into this several times, which is how I know <laughs> to give you a, a heads up. Um, I have been able a little bit to use my kneaded eraser to pick that up. But again, if you go at it too hard, you might disrupt the whole texture of the surface here. That looks a little better, but you can see now that there's a difference between the graphite I had laid down first and then the graphite I laid down second. So we're, now we're left with a spot that's in the shape of how I tr just tried to erase it. All I can say is just keep practicing putting it on, taking it off, putting it on, taking it off. And there's another reason why I want you to practice doing that is because when you see me working on the projects, the methods and the techniques that I use require adding a layer, taking some off, adding more, taking some more off. So it's this whole process of building up the layers from really light values to darker values to bringing out the highlights at the very end. One last thing that I want to talk about too is just practicing making fur. The best way to practice fur is to A, look at a reference photo, of course. And when you're looking at your reference photo, notice how the hair goes this way and that way. And there's flyaways and there's curls. And see if you can try to recreate those details with your pencil or with the brush or with the eraser. I see a lot of beginning artists or new artists making their fur in very straight and rigid lines. And that just doesn't happen in nature. So what happens is your drawing looks really, really flat. It looks not believable. And the way that you're gonna have a realistic looking drawing or animal is if you really pay attention to the details and especially the direction in which all of the fur is going, sometimes you're gonna have fur that is resting underneath other fur or it curls up and or makes waves. Now if it makes waves, what is it? What's happening that makes it look like waves? Let me just show you a really quick little tutorial here. If you had an animal that had wavy hair, so then what I would do is if I made those lines with the eraser, I'd come back in and darken my shadows and start adding details. And so you can see the way you know it's a curl or the way that you know that uh, there's many layers is that there's this flow to the fur, right? Anything that's coming up and out of a shadow is going to collect the sunlight. And then when it goes back into um, the rest of the fur, it's going to create a shadow. Moving around the graphite a little bit. And what that does is it blends out the graphite that I've laid down and it kind of tamps down the brightness of the, the highlights that I had just made with my eraser. And so what it starts to do is give you the illusion that this section here is on the upturn of that curl and this section here is going in. And that's what gives you a little bit more structure and a little bit more believability. So practice doing a lot of that stuff. And again, look at a reference photo. The more observant you can be on looking at your, your subject or your reference photo, the better it's going to translate into your drawing. I hope you found the video helpful and that you can use the tips in your own work. And if you have any questions, please let me know about them in the comments and let me know how your drawings are going. And um, if you do like the video, please hit like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.